The Resident Evil series has had many ups and downs, but the one game many cite as the best of the series is often Resident Evil 4. It has been ported to many different consoles and is often the highest rated game of the series. With that much hype surrounding the game, I was of course somewhat skeptical if it could all live up to that expectation. While the game has many ups and some deep downs, it absolutely deserves all that praise placed upon it. The Resident Evil games may just seem like simple zombie games, but the deeper you dig, the more you find out they involve a lot about conspiracies and espionage, and this game is no different. What initially involves trying to rescue the president's daughter becomes a much deeper plot about cults and mind control and taking over the world. However, a lot of this is only told through text documents. The minute to minute gameplay really just involves going from one place to another to get to the next area. Areas feel less like this huge connective world and more one level leading into the next. It ultimately offers enough of a hook that you always want to see where the story goes next, but it's never something that truly engages or connects with you on an emotional level. Despite many HD remakes often rebuilding the game from scratch, this version of Resident Evil 4 is the same basic version that was released on the GameCube well over 12 years ago. As such, a lot of the textures and models are really showing their age. The game still looks great and has that distinct Resident Evil style, but there's a fair bit of disconnect having the game look so dated. This is especially true for the Ada side missions you unlock, as their cutscenes are extremely compressed and blurry. The actual gameplay got an HD coat of paint, but these cutscenes look like they were just ripped off a PS2 disc and the screen was coated in Vaseline. However, judging the game on its own merit, it does have a great variety of environments and enemies to encounter. Despite really only taking place in three main areas, the game will take you to so many different places from dirty villages to gothic castles to hidden caverns and so much more. You definitely get the sense of how dirty and disgusting the village is or how old and decrepit the castle is. Even the enemies themselves offer a lot of varieties. Despite mainly just being stumbling zombies, there's still a lot of different models so you're rarely shooting the same enemy over and over again. True, it may not be the looker it once was, but it still offers enough varied sights to always have you want to explore every inch of it. While the first few Resident Evil games had a fixed camera angle, this game shook up the formula by switching to an over-the-shoulder third-person shooter. However, you can't move and shoot at the same time, so it forces you to decide when to run and when to fight back. There's also the added fact that your aiming reticle sways around, meaning you have to be much more deliberate with your shots. This has been a point of contention with some, because on a certain level it arbitrarily makes the game harder, and it's simply added to make the game more tense. And while there was one or two moments of me dying because I was fighting with the controls, I had to change the control scheme three times, once you do get adjusted, they work perfectly fine. The more interesting aspect about the Switch in format is the fact that the game is much more action heavy. Very rarely do you ever feel outmatched or overwhelmed. True, there are moments where you may be freaked out or frightened, but never full on moments of fear or terror. More often it would be, oh man, that is a lot of enemies, oh damn, he looks really tough, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to kill him. In fact, many bosses I had to look up on how to beat them expecting some hidden technique or some secret, when many of them just defaulted to overpowering them. This is especially true when you start exploring the add-on content, as there is a horde type mode where you have to try and kill as many zombies as possible, giving extra points for headshots and multiple kills. Adding to the disconnect is the way your inventory works. True, you can upgrade its size, but where it should be this tense part of item management having to juggle the right amount of ammo and health and weapons. It just gives the feeling of the game not wanting you to have that many weapons until a certain point. There's also the problem that to change weapons, you have to constantly pause, head to the menu, and then select it, as opposed to just having a quick select button. However, that is only controlling Leon, as the other half of the game involves escorting the president's daughter around. You would think this adds a lot of tension trying to protect her, but you can just command her to hide into a bin until all the enemies are dead, which means she really doesn't add that much to gameplay. As opposed to having divert your attention and constantly keep an eye on her, she just becomes an object you have to drag along. 
Ultimately, the game really boils down to that sentiment. It should be tense, but it really isn't. True, there are some grotesque monsters and horrible imageries, but they only offer fleeting senses of fear. Still, all this back and forth about tone doesn't make the game any less fun. Quite the contrary. It is a blast to take on waves and waves of increasingly tough enemies as you upgrade your weapons to wreck devastating shots. Horror aspects aside, this is a great zombie shooter that offers just enough challenge to always keep you on your toes. You could spend hours discussing if the change to a more action-heavy gameplay style was a good or a bad change, but regardless, the fact is, it is an absolute blast to play through the game and fight off waves of enemies. The controls may leave something to be desired, but the fact that a game this old still plays so great shows why it's been ported to so many different consoles. Add on a fair bit of unlockable content and a mostly great PS4 upscaling, and this is absolutely worth the play for new players and returning fans alike. Resident Evil 4 gets a 9 out of 10.